Hey there, everyone. Pastor Tim here from the church at West Shore. Welcome to our daily devotion and prayer time, Sunday edition. I want to wish everyone a happy Lord's Day. And we are in Leviticus 16. We've gone through a lot of the instructions and the uh, requirements that God gave the children of Israel. Today, we come to a passage that really, when you when you look at it, has the heart of the gospel in it. So let's uh, let's take a look at what God says. Verse 1, Leviticus 16, the Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons who died after they entered the Lord's presence and burned the wrong kind of fire before him. The Lord said to Moses, warn your brother Aaron not to enter the most holy place behind the inner curtain whenever he chooses. If he does, he will die. For the ark's cover, the place of atonement is there, and I myself am present in the cloud above the atonement cover. When Aaron enters the sanctuary area, he must follow these instructions fully. He must bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He must put on his linen tunic and the linen undergarments worn next to his body. He must tie the linen sash around his waist and put the linen turban on his head. These are sacraments. These are sacred sac garments. So he must bathe himself in water before he puts them on. Aaron must take from the community of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. Then he must take the two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. He is to cast sacred lots to determine which goat will reserve as an offering, be reserved as an offering for the Lord and which will carry the sins of the people to the wilderness of Azazel. Aaron will then present a sin offering as a sin offering, the goat chosen by lot for the Lord. The other goat, the scapegoat chosen by lot to be sent away, will be kept alive standing before the Lord. When it is sent away to Azazel in the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right with the Lord. Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. After he has slaughtered the bull as a sin offering, he will fill an incense burner with burning coals from the altar that stands before the Lord. Then he will take two handfuls of fragrant powder, powdered incense, and will carry the burner and the incense behind the inner curtain. There in the Lord's presence, he will put the incense on the burning coals so that a cloud of incense will rise over the ark's cover, the place of atonement that rests on the, ark's, on the ark of the covenant. If he follows these instructions, he will not die. Then he must take some of the blood of the bull, dip his finger in it, and sprinkle it on the east side of the atonement cover. He must sprinkle blood seven times with his fingers, with his finger in front of the atonement cover. Then Aaron must slaughter the first goat as a sin offering for the people and carry its blood behind the inner curtain. There he will sprinkle the goat's blood over the atonement cover and in front of it, just as he did with the bull's blood. Through, his, through this process, he will purify the most holy place and he will do the same for the entire tabernacle because of the defiling sin and rebellion of the Israelites. No one else is allowed to enter inside the tabernacle when Aaron in, enters it for the purification ceremony in the most holy place. No one may enter until he comes out again after purifying himself, his family, and all the congregation of Israel, making them right with the Lord. Then Aaron will come out to purify the altar that stands before the Lord. He will do this by taking some of the blood from the bull and the goat and putting it on each of the horns of the altar. Then he must sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times over the altar. In this way, he will cleanse it from Israel's defilement and make it holy. When Aaron had finished purifying the most holy place and the tabernacle and the altar, he must present the live goat. He will lay both of his hands on the goat's head and confess over it all the wickedness, rebellion, and sins of the people of Israel. In this way, he will transfer the people's sins to the head of the goat. Then a man specially chosen for the task will drive the goat into the wilderness. As the goat goes into the wilderness, it will carry all the people's sins upon itself into a des desolate land. When Aaron goes back into the tabernacle, he must take off the linen garments he was wearing when he entered the most holy place, and he must leave the garments there. Then he must bathe himself with water in a sacred place, put on his regular garments, and go out to sacrifice a burnt offering for himself and a burnt offering for the people. Through this process, he will purify himself and the people, making them right with the Lord. He must then burn all the fat of the sin offering on the altar. The man chosen to drive the scapegoat into the wilderness of Azazel 
must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. Then he may return to the camp. The bull and the goat presented as sin offerings, whose blood Aaron takes into the most holy place for the purification ceremony, will be carried outside the camp. The animal's hides, internal organs, and dung are all to be burned. The man who burns them must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water before returning to the camp. On the tenth day of the appointed month in early autumn, you must deny yourselves. Neither native-born Israelites nor foreigners living among you may do any kind of work. This is a permanent law for you. On that day, offerings of purification will be made for you, and you will be purified in the Lord's presence from all your sins. It will be a Sabbath day of complete rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. This is a permanent law for you. In future generations, the purification ceremony will be performed by the priest who has been anointed and ordained to serve as high priest in place of his ancestor Aaron. He will put on the holy linen garments and purify the most holy place, the tabernacle, the altar, the priest, and the entire congregation. This is a permanent law for you to purify the people of Israel from their sins, making them right with the Lord once each year. Moses followed all these instructions exactly as the Lord had commanded him. Now, as I said, if, as you read through this, I, I hope that you could see the message of the gospel um, ringing true through all of this. And as we've said before, all of these things were uh, fulfilled by Jesus. But I, wanna, I want us to focus on one aspect this morning, and that is the aspect of the scapegoat. We've talked a lot about sacrifice. We've talked about the, the altar and, and purifying things. But I want to talk about this idea of a scapegoat because this is exactly what Jesus did for us. Not only did he die for our sins, but he took all of our sin, our, our sinful nature upon himself and as the priest, as, as the man that was appointed here, sent the scapegoat out into the wilderness, this is what Jesus has done for us with our sin. He has taken it out into the wilderness. It has been transferred onto him and taken to the wilderness. And as scripture tells us, it has been taken, it's been buried in the sea of forgetfulness. It has been cast as far as the east is from the west and to be remembered no more. Folks, we have the ability to move into the presence of God, into the holy place, because of what Jesus did. All of these regulations were because of the sin nature of the children of Israel. The reason we are separated from God is our sin nature. But when we understand that Jesus took everything upon him and, and was sent out, and, and removed our sin, we now have the ability, we have the joy of moving in to the presence of God, a holy God, knowing that we are not held accountable because Jesus took it all upon himself. What a great, great word for today's Lord day, Lord's Day. May we take it in. Let's pray. Father, thank you that Jesus is our scapegoat, that, that all of our sin nature, all of our shortcomings have been placed upon him and he carried them away. We've been washed clean because of what he did for us. We are grateful, we are thankful, and our words fall short of our appreciation. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for providing a way for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I trust you'll have a super Sunday, a wonderful Lord's Day. Don't forget, we'll be wrapping up our series Hazardous Prayers today at 11 a.m. at West Shore. I trust that you'll join us if you can. We also have the privilege and the honor of, uh, of observing baptism today. Another one of our young ones from our children's ministry has accepted Jesus, may, making him the Lord of her life. So join us at 11 o'clock if you can. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. May God bless you.